Okay. Okay. Correct. Correct. So, as I bring this down, I'm going to bring it to the position it would be in to load that mirror at the end of the boom. Okay. Okay. And that would be here. Wow. Really down. Really down. Yeah. See, because I'll show you the mirror here. We don't have them in right now because of the weather. So here's the primary mirror in a metal cell. Wow. So we lift this whole thing out. It's pretty heavy. And you would walk out to the end of the boom here. Okay. And, and then attach it to the bottom. It, it comes in and it bolts to the bottom of these screws right here. So oh, usually okay. in this position, we'd kind of push it into position with your knee mm -hmm. and then put the nuts on it. Okay, okay. So now the primary mirror is in place. And again, as I say, that comes to a focus inside beyond that mirror. And I'll show you the flat mirror as well inside. Okay. But you can see, given the length of this boom, right now, we'd be looking at something that would be in the southern sky, but maybe starting to starting to set towards the west. Got it, got it, the same, and yeah, got it. As we track, mm -hmm. this boom is gonna come down into this trench. Oh, okay, okay. So if we were looking at something in this direction and we're following it down to the western horizon, this has to be able to rotate down here to follow it. Wow. Now, so there's a very large 16 inch flat mirror that goes in that holder there. 16 inch flat mirror, okay, yes. there, okay. Excuse me. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> 16 inch flat mirror. That's right here, wow. with the with the hole through the, the middle of it. The forty five degree hole. Wow. Yes, so very precision surface, very difficult to make uh, uh, a flat mirror that large of good quality. Wow. And then that reflects out to the primary. And, and it's all handmade, or like yes, wow. all handmade. Wow. So during the daytime, mm -hmm. if the sun were out, we would be showing solar. And the way we do solar observing is we have a smaller flat mirror here. Okay. that's mounted in this holder so it would go in the same place as the big mirror okay. but we don't need as much light gathering power Cut it. Cut it. so six inch would then it's sort of an off-axis you know almost think of it as an off-axis mask okay so we're using a small six inch mirror that goes back and reflects use parts of this mirror one quadrant of it let's say mm -hmm. and that gets beamed back through the eyepiece which would go in this holder here is the uh, eyepiece. Okay. This is the eyepiece. So yes, that's okay. where the eyepiece would be. And we would project onto a flat, round screen that we place in that hole. Some, oh, okay. So we have a large... Here's the screen. Oh, why the screen? So okay. we can reflect, or, or rather project, a, uh, an image of the sun there. But the image is so big that you're really only looking at one quadrant of the sun. Ah, okay. okay. Um, but we can, we can project here so people can see. So mm -hmm. let me show you how we would find an object in the sky. Okay. We have to know the coordinates of the object we want to see, right ascension and declination. So here's an example from an, uh, here's a, a, a list that somebody wrote up for this convention. Okay. So let's say um, the planet Jupiter, we could see what time it rises. It doesn't rise mm -hmm. until uh, 1030 at night, mm -hmm. but we have the declination plus 15 degrees, nine minutes. Got it. So we would set the declination here, plus, here's plus and minus. Okay, okay. Got so it. we would set this to plus 15 degrees in about nine minutes. Okay. Lock this, and then we would find the right ascension, which is two hours, 52 minutes. And what we would do is we would rotate this ring, this ring, is marked in hours and minutes. So here, well, I see that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we would find the right coordinate and set it here, because this is W means the boom is in the west as it is right now. The boom is on this side of the building. Okay. 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 So once we have the coordinates set here, now we need to rotate the dome to accommodate for what is local sidereal time okay. directly above us. Okay. So we okay. would have local sidereal time set on this clock here. It's not turned on right now, but okay. we would have determined that by computer or whatever. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Local sidereal time, and then we would rotate the entire dome until the local sidereal time was here, straight uh, down, straight up. Okay. Once you have local sidereal time there, 
and these have already been set to declination and right ascension, the object we want to view should be in the eyepiece. Wow. So the eyepiece goes here. So depending on where you're looking in the sky, if we're looking at something that's just rising in the east, the boom might be almost straight up. Okay. And we're following something as it tracks towards the western horizon. So sometimes this eyepiece is in a position <laughs> that can be difficult. So we have a step stool okay, okay. Uh, to get on and so forth. Got it, got it. So that's the basic idea. The idea, you know, was to be able to observe inside where it's comfortable and not be outside in the cold with the optics got it, on got a cold it, night. Got it. Yeah, very, so rather, very unique idea, very, very integrally, unique idea. Yes, yeah, yes. Very integrally made as well. Yeah. And, and who made this? This was made by the Springfield Telescope Makers, by the club ourselves. Okay. Back in the, uh, back in the 1920s, the original mirrors were from uh, Porter, Russell Porter. From who, Russell Porter, okay. Yes, okay. prior to that, he, this, this is his design. So okay, it's, it's okay. It's Porter Turret Telescope. <laughs> But uh, the original mirrors that we used for this project were ones that he made for a similar setup at his home in Port Clyde, Maine. He was okay. originally from Springfield, but he okay. was in Port Clyde, Maine after he went on several Arctic expeditions <laughs> in his, uh, his earlier life. And he went up to Maine um, okay. and had a home up there, built some cottages up there, designed them. Okay. And uh, he had set up these mirrors using a similar system up there, but it was uh, arranged vertically. So he was sort of in the living room of his kitchen, okay. in, or the living room of the home, and the mirrors were up above, beaming down to another mirror down below, sort of at the top of his chimney and down below into wow. the living room. Wow. <laughs> so it was later incorporated into this, but here you can see when it was being built here, Okay. Yeah, you can yeah. see here's the clubhouse, they made the base to support the ring and so forth here. Back then, you could see down into the valley very few trees. This is looking north. Okay. And they, they built up the, uh, the ironwork, the metalwork and so forth, was done in the shops down in town. And mm -hmm. then they brought it up here on their trucks, built a, uh, a platform to raise the ring up onto it and so forth. This was completed in 1930. 1930? Wow. Yes. Yes. Almost 100 years ago. Wow. Yes, practically. Wow. wow. Very close. Wow. Yep, so this has been here and been in continuous operation since then. The optics were, were redone uh, somewhat later with some better quality glass, some better okay. uh, mirrors and so forth. And uh, it's still in operation. Wow. I still enjoy, I enjoy wow. using it. The only thing I don't like about it is if you're in a, um, say about this time of year, the Perseids meteor shower and so forth, you might be inside here and you have the Porter turret aligned on something like Jupiter or Saturn. That's obvious eye candy, very beautiful. Yeah, yeah. You've got a long line of people waiting to look through the eyepiece while outside people are going, ooh, ah. <laughs> but you can't see any of that coming in. Yeah, so there's yeah. a trade-off. Yeah. It's a wonderful instrument and it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun to operate. But people say, well, can you really do anything good with it? I mean, given modern telescopes and so forth. But if you take a look inside, <laughs> there's a picture here that was taken through this telescope of Mars. Oh, this one, Mars. Wow. During an opposition in, in 2005. Wow. And that was ch taken with actually a very cheap webcam uh -huh. just attached to the eyepiece holder on this. Wow. wow. Yeah, so it's wow. it's still a, a viable instrument, and it's a, it's a lot of fun to operate. But... There is a certain fear factor involved mm -hmm. because, as I say, loading the mirrors into there, and in particular the flat mirror, which I showed you, which is back here, mm -hmm. the flat mirror is very heavy, 16-inch mirror. Please, please come. You can come, come right please, in. Please come. Come. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So the flat mirror is here. It is now in a carbon fiber holder that one of our members made back in the late 1990s. Okay. Hmm. So you can pick it up by this and you have to go up the stairs and you have to wiggle yourself into this truss work and put it in place. We used to have to put our hand through the hole oh, okay. to carry it up wow. there while saying, oh God, oh God, oh God, <laughs> please don't let me be the one that drops this. So this, this made it much easier to actually put into place. Hmm. So we would put the mirrors in, let them equilibrate to the outside temperature, and uh, and then we can start observing. But there's still uh, a, yeah. a good number of our members that know how to operate the scope and enjoy doing so, because it's it's very much uh, steampunk. You know, it's that classic 1920s kind of. Uh, you know, you don't need computers. Yeah. yeah. So the eyepiece is right there, but depending on where we're looking in the sky. 
Right. Sometimes if we're looking at something that's just rising in the east, the boom is almost straight up. And we're going to start tracking and following it across the sky. So, so this works as, as I, I tell people, it's sort of an inside out or backwards Newtonian. Where instead of it hitting the big primary mirror first, and then coming down to a focus and being reflected out by a small flat mirror. In this case, we've got a very big flat mirror with a hole in it, mounted at 45 degrees. So the light hits that first, beams out to the primary, and then it comes through the hole in that secondary mirror to the eyepiece, which is here. So right now, in this position, we'd be looking at something that's almost overhead, somewhere along that, that overhead line north or south, depending upon the position of this, this wheel, north or south uh, declination. And then, after we're on the object we want to see and we engage the motor and we start turning the entire dome to track it, that boom is going to slowly come down this way as the earth turns, and that's why there's that big trench out in the front for the end of that boom to track down into. So when we're looking at something that's almost setting in the west, the eyepiece is down here. Down there. Yeah. yeah. Huh. It's a fun instrument to operate. It is. It is. And it's good to keep the uh, keep the old ways alive. <laughs> See, that's, that's really. Yeah. You can appreciate the new ways. Right? Well, that as well. That as well. <laughs> but, it, but when the sun is out. Um, um, you don't need big 16-inch mirrors, obviously, to gather all that light. What we do is we use a small solar flat here. Okay. So this is mounted in a wooden piece. Is that 6-inch? That is. And that goes up there in the, um, in the secondary holder, in the field mm -hmm. mirror holder, if you will. And that reflects light out to the primary. Here's the primary mirror here in itself. That's, yep, 12-inch F-17. It says sphere, but it is a yeah. parabola. Um, so that mirror would obviously only illuminate, you know, a small quadrant on this one. But again, the light comes back through the eyepiece, and we project onto a white screen here the uh, the solar image. And it is so big that we really can only fit in about one quadrant of the sun. How often do you have goes really in? Not very often at all. Not very often at all. I think uh, I've been a member uh, 30 some odd years, and I think we've done it once, maybe twice. Definitely once. I'm not sure if we've done it twice. Hmm. So even though it looks similar to the Hartness House, the Hartness House, it's, it's different. They're like these guys. Yes, it does.